my name is Peter and welcome again to my workshop here at Sunny Beaches. We're here today to talk about uh, once again the Minimax CU300 European style combination woodworking machine. If you saw my video uh, that went through the table saw function of the CU300, you may recall that I mentioned that uh, when I was discussing the scoring blade that I had stripped out the threads on the part of the scoring assembly uh, that uh, serves to raise and lower the scoring blade. And I further explained that my solution to that problem was to drill that out and re-tap it for a larger size thread. Uh, one of the reasons I took that approach to fixing the problem was that I could do it with the assembly uh, installed in the saw. Uh, and the reason that was important is that I was totally unable to remove the assembly. Uh, it's held in place by two bolts, one of which came out easily, and one of which uh, nothing I tried would, would free up that bolt. Um, so and I didn't want to um, be any more invasive than I needed to be, uh, so I decided that uh, the, the approach I took was the least invasive uh, approach, but that solution has now failed. The uh, bolt that needs to turn to raise and lower the, the blade is, is totally jammed. Um, so if I was ever going to use the scoring blade again, I needed to get that assembly out. So once again, I tried to free up the bolt and uh, failed and eventually ended up stripping out the head. Uh, so I was left with really no option but to drill it out, uh, which actually only took a couple of minutes and I'm happy to say didn't damage anything other than the bolt itself. So uh, now with the assembly out, um, it, it's not going to be difficult to repair the problem or uh, really anywhere near as expensive as I was afraid it was going to be. Uh, we'll get back to that uh, in a bit. but. Uh, when, when this is installed, uh, most of it is very difficult or impossible to see clearly. Uh, so a lot of the functionality of, of uh, the, the scoring assembly um, is, is, uh, has been a mystery to me for uh, the, the whole time I've owned the saw. Uh, so, but it's much clearer now. Uh, that the assembly is out and, and it can be uh, readily seen. So I thought there were other people out there who might be interested in how this whole thing goes together and how it works. So here's the scoring assembly um, on a surface that I hope will allow you to see it more clearly. Uh, just to orient you, the uh, saw blade gets mounted here. Uh, this flat pulley uh, is where the drive belt um, goes to, to drive the blade. Uh, this block here has the three control points that you access through the surface of the table saw. So uh, the control point uh, to my left, your right, uh, is where you can adjust the scoring blade, moving it left and right, uh, so that you can line it up with the, the main saw blade. Uh, the, the amount of adjustment here is about three millimeters or roughly an eighth of an inch. Uh, the center control is a simple lock that, that screws down and applies pressure uh, on this uh, shaft to lock things in place. And the third access point uh, or control point is this screw which is supposed to uh, be used to raise and lower the scoring blade uh, and this is where I affected my repair so this is not the original screw that's one size larger and I'm not sure how well this is going to show but uh, when I uh, drilled and tapped that uh, there was very little metal left here uh, and uh, that has deformed and the threads inside there have deformed and now this um, screw is, is totally frozen in place uh, so making it uh, non-functional 
Uh, and what that means is that this, this block, which is this bar here and the block thing here, uh, needs to be replaced. So now that I had the scoring assembly out of the machine and could see what was going on more clearly, uh, I next went to my parts manual and identified uh, this part, which wasn't hard, uh, and then took the corresponding part number and entered it into the partspronto.com uh, website, which is the SCM Group's um, online parts store. And uh, the part came up and I learned a couple things about it. Well, one is that it is called the Scoring Support, uh, which isn't too bad a name. It is, in fact, where the assembly is attached to the rest of the machine, uh, bolts that go into these two holes here. Uh, I further learned that a replacement for one of these would, uh, was going to cost me somewhere between $130 and $140 plus shipping, uh, and I was really afraid it was going to be much worse. Uh, this isn't just a hunk of metal, I mean, there's, there's a lot going on here. Uh, and I learned that they had one in stock, which is nice, so I, I shouldn't have to wait for one to come from Italy. Um, but before I went ahead and ordered that, I had to make sure that I could disassemble this enough to uh, take the old one off and put the new one on and get all of these little pieces um, disattached. <laughs> so, um, and if I couldn't do that, then the only option would be to buy the whole assembly, which you can do. Uh, there's a part number for the whole thing. Uh, and that'll run uh, between six and seven hundred dollars. So it was uh, certainly worth my while to take the time to figure out how to get this taken apart, which, which I did. In order to remove uh, the uh, scoring support subassembly from the larger assembly, uh, we're first going to have to remove a couple of uh, little pieces that will prevent the, uh, this block from sliding uh, along the shaft that it's mounted on. And that shaft uh, serves as a hinge that uh, the scoring uh, shaft component pivots on. So uh, first thing we'll do is take out the locking set screw uh, that's normally accessed through the top of the table saw and set that aside. And then a, a hidden component that, that I found out about the hard way is a uh, little uh, brass, I'm pretty sure, hockey puck shaped thing that uh, we don't want to lose and if we left it down there it would uh, get in the way later on. Uh, then we're next going to, uh, since we're going to have to slide the, the hinge shaft one way or the other, uh, we'll need to remove uh, the set screw that holds it in place and actually if, uh, it would be a bit in the way for the next step anyway. Uh, so we have to also remove the part of the uh, support block here that uh, provides the left-right adjustment for the scoring blade. And so uh, that's held in place with a set screw, and the set screw is held in place with a locking nut. Uh, so we'll need to loosen that up and then back the set screw out. Uh, in theory, uh, it wouldn't be necessary to remove this all the way, but you can't really know when you've backed it out far enough. So we'll just remove it, which we'd have to do eventually anyway. And then to remove this adjustment piece, um, my technique is to put the Allen wrench in and then put some side pressure on it and then uh, pull back. And that's worked for me. Uh, and I'm not sure what other technique uh, you could use. So we'll take a look at this uh, briefly. You can see that uh, there's a, a gap in the shaft that uh, that set screw went into to uh, keep it in place. And at the bottom, there's uh, a little circular piece that's off center. And that's what that provides the left-right uh, motion as that turns. 
Uh, that's that's half of it anyway. Um, and uh, now we're ready to slide that hinge shaft, which uh, sometimes is easier than others, and it's being difficult this time, of course. So there's a, a spring that uh, serves to hold the scoring blade uh, down under the table. And now we can pull that uh, block off. Uh, a word about this shaft. Um, the, the first time I took this apart, I had to use quite a bit more force than that to, to move the, the, uh, the hinge shaft. And, uh, and the problem seemed to be at the, at the two ends, in the middle, uh, it, would, it would rotate and slide back and forth freely. So I spent some time with, with a file uh, on the two ends so that it'll go in and out a bit more freely now. Uh, note that, uh, well here's the, the gap in the shaft, that's the other half of the side-to-side -side, uh, adjustment mechanism. So that little circular piece registers in there. Uh, and the shaft is not symmetrical. Uh, this is, end is shorter than that end. Uh, and if, like me, you take it apart without paying attention, I can, I can help you out a little bit there. The, the longer end uh, goes towards the saw blade. It's now several days later and our new scoring support piece uh, has arrived. Uh, SCM Group sent along some paperwork with it uh, detailing that the piece cost uh, $138.91 and they charged me $17.31 for shipping. So for a little more than $150 I'm going to get my scoring blade back which I think is worth the price. So we now have to uh, go through the process of reassembly, the uh, full scoring assembly. Uh, and to start, uh, I did save the original set screw that's accessed through the top and is used to raise and lower uh, the scoring blade. So uh, we can put that in the new block. And then uh, the rest of the reassembly steps will be uh, pretty much the reverse of what you just watched. So there's nothing really uh, new to be learned there, I think. Um, so I won't make you watch. So our scoring assembly has now been reassembled. Uh, but before we move on to installation, there's just a couple of points I wanted to touch on. Uh, the first has to do with the, the hinge shaft, uh, which, as you saw, can, can slide left and right. And, uh, and there's nothing really to indicate when it's in the, the correct position. And the position it ends up in will affect the location of the scoring blade. Um, now, of course, uh, that location can be uh, adjusted up to that three millimeters or about eighth of an inch through the top of the table. But it's possible things could be uh, so far off that that's uh, not enough to bring it into alignment uh, with the main blade. And if we find that's the case, the solution will be to uh, loosen up the set screw and shift the position of the hinge shaft a little bit one way or the other and retighten. Uh, and that way you get the, the scoring blade, you know, so it's within uh, the range of adjustment provided uh, here and that we can bring the two blades into alignment. Uh, the second item is uh, this set screw here, which I don't believe we've touched on before. This again is the set screw that raises and lowers uh, the blade. Uh, this one, uh, it, it seems it's only conceivable purpose is to limit how high the scoring blade can be raised. And actually one of my little pet peeves with the SC300, um, the CU300, sorry, um, is that the, the, the blade um, raised to its highest level would only barely clear the surface of the table. Uh, so I really don't want that to be limiting um, how far we can raise. So I'm going to back that off so it's barely protruding 
uh, and see how that goes. This is not accessible through the tabletop, so after it's installed, uh, that would be uh, difficult or impossible to re readjust without taking it out again. There is some disassembly that needs to happen inside the machine uh, before we can get to the location where the scoring assembly uh, is mounted. Um, and we'll start that process by removing the blade and the splitter. We've also uh, removed the uh, piece that the uh, splitter attaches to, and we're going to remove the uh, steel piece that's at the front end of the slider uh, just to give us a little better access to the insides. Next we need to get the blade guard out of the way. We're not going to remove it entirely from the machine, but we're going to uh, loosen up or remove these three bolts. And now we can kind of lower the blade guard down into the machine to get it out of the way. We're also going to remove the plastic cover here from the front of the machine. Inside the front of the machine there's this piece of metal here and I, it doesn't appear to have any function other than to make it difficult to get to parts of the inside of the machines. Um, so we're going to get that out of the way as well. That's actually part of uh, this piece as well which is a, a cover for this gearbox. So it's held in place by just a couple of screws so we'll pull that out of the way as well. So now we have better access to the interior of the machine. Uh, I should have made note that uh, at this point the um, saw is rotated uh, to about the 45 degree um, mark. So looking again from the top with the saw uh, still tilted near 45 degrees, uh, here are the two mounting holes for the scoring assembly. Uh, and bolts get fed through those and into uh, threaded holes in the scoring support block. So that only took a couple of minutes to get the two bolts uh, threaded and then uh, tightened. Uh, there is uh, one part of the installation here that I want to point out more closely. You may recall uh, during our disassembly process there, there was a spring uh, that um, goes around the, the hinge shaft. Uh, and one part of that spring uh, is riding up here on top of the assembly. And the other goes uh, to, towards the front end uh, of the machine um, around this bolt. And the effect of that is to pull the uh, scoring blade down with really uh, more force than I'd like. I kind of blame this uh, for the problem with stripping out the threads uh, for in the up-down adjustment to begin with. But that's where that's supposed to go. At this point, uh, the only uh, scoring-related uh, parts that need to uh, still be reattached are uh, the scoring blade uh, itself and the drive belt. Um, now, uh, I've, I've replaced the drive belt once in the past many years ago uh, and as I recall it took me hours to get it threaded over all of the various pulleys that it needs to go over uh, in inaccessible places. So I'm going to hold off on that for now and we'll put the, the blade on and we'll also put the main blade on and make sure that we can get the, uh, those two blades to, to line up. And in fact they will not line up. Uh, even with the scoring blade as far uh, to your right as it will go, it's still uh, significantly to uh, your left uh, of the main blade. Uh, and unfortunately uh, there is not enough clearance uh, to get the Allen wrench in to uh, loosen up the lock nut uh, for the hinge shaft. So we're going to have to pull this out again. So after uh, adjusting the position of that uh, hinge shaft uh, a little bit, uh, it appears we are now able 
uh, to bring our scoring blade into alignment with the main blade. Uh, but of course, in order to uh, actually uh, make that setting and, and confirm uh, that we need to install the, the drive belt. So if you look at the appropriate page of the parts manual, we can get uh, an idea of how the belt runs. Uh, there's a total of four flat pulleys, uh, and the rear one, this doesn't really show up that well, but uh, is uh, tension is kept on it um, with a spring uh, that keeps tension on the, on the whole belt. So uh, we have to feel around under the machine and try to identify these points and then uh, you know, thread the belt uh, around them in the right order. Um, so this will probably take a while. So actually it only took me 10 to 15 minutes to uh, remount the scoring belt. Uh, and most of the time uh, was spent puzzling over the correct routing of the belt through and around the, the various pulleys. And, and there are actually five pulleys, not the four suggested uh, in the manual. Uh, so my basic approach to this uh, was to work through the front of the machine with the arbor tilted at uh, close to 45 degrees. Um, I started at the, the rearmost pulley, uh, which is the one with the, the spring on it. Uh, so I was able to reach in and loop uh, the belt around that pulley and then use my left hand to keep tension on the belt so it wouldn't fall off and my right to uh, weave the belt through the pulleys and uh, finally attaching it to the pulley at the other end of the scoring shaft. Uh, and then I, I turned uh, things by hand a bit to try to make sure the belt was, was properly seated and then did a short run uh, to make sure it was going to stay in place, and it did. Um, so uh, we need to put the rest of the machine back together, uh, which is a pretty straightforward process. So with the machine fully reassembled, uh, I took a couple of minutes and made a couple of test cuts and uh, with a tweak of an Allen wrench, uh, managed to get the scoring blade uh, aligned with the main blade uh, pretty much perfectly, as well as my eyesight will allow. Um, so I guess we can call uh, this project a success. Uh, naturally, I'm anxious uh, <laughs> Not to ever have to do this project again. Um, so one of the techniques I think I'm going to adopt uh, in order to uh, avoid putting uh, excessive strain on those threads in the uh, mounting block uh, that control the up-down motion of the scoring blade, uh, I'm going to put a glove on my left hand and try to take pressure off the uh, off that screw um, and hopefully preserve the threads that way so and I'll do that for both raising and lowering uh, that's all the way down we'll just put a little bit of pressure on there to keep that screw from vibrating loose okay so there you have it uh, scoring blade assembly repair uh, Thanks for watching. I hope you found this uh, useful or at least interesting. See you next time.